Hey guys, welcome back to How to Teach Online with Angela Lawrence. So today I'm going to show you guys something I'm really excited about. I have been struggling with students who are coming to class um, a little bit patchy lately. I have 8th grade middle school, so I've got like orthodontist appointments and families going out of town. And um, so I've been dealing with a little bit more absences than normal. So I wanted to kind of show you guys a way that I have figured out how to use tabs without using any code. In my class, normally for my uh, daily agenda, it's basically like a daily agenda, and I go in and I update this every day, and then I have the weekly agenda here for the absent kids, if they just want to see the week at a glance what's coming up. But this just isn't working for me anymore. And I had seen online people use tabs, but I thought, ugh, it just looks so difficult with all the coding involved. I really didn't want to do all that so I played around with it for a little bit and I found a way to do weekly agendas with no code at all and I'm super excited to share that with you so now that when my kids come in they're gonna see tabs instead of having to update my daily agenda every day I will just make one of these over the weekend and then it's gonna you know be there for the kids and then I'd also be able to archive the page and duplicate it, make another one, so that I can make the next week's agenda. So this is like a win-win-win for me because it's good for the students, it's good for me to have a record of my lesson plans, and I'm just, you know, excited that I don't have to fuss with any code whatsoever. So if you're wondering how do I edit this, well in this video I'm going to show you how to edit the tabs, how to um, download this page into your canvas so that you can use this with your students. All right, so to edit it, I'm going to click on the edit button. And what I've done is obviously it does use all the code that you see on the other tutorials, but I've hit it for you. So as long as you don't touch these five bullet points, all the code is already written for you and hidden right there. So what you're going to be editing is you're going to be editing the part here. So We've got that it's Monday, and then you can type in whatever you want. So if you don't like any of the stuff I've written here, you can do whatever you would like to put in here. Um, you can add pictures, you can add video clips, you can add text, copy and paste. You can even link up, let's say you have want to put in like your assignments, and then you want to link it up. You can go to links, assignments, and you can link it up to your assignment. I think I have to highlight it first, don't I? There we go. Okay, so now you can have your assignments in there. You can put files in there. You can do whatever you want. Let's just, uh, I don't know, put a file in there for the fun of it, right? And so you would just go in and you'd edit, delete and edit underneath each tab what you want. So it's no code, it's just what you want to put in there. And then you hit save and then it will update your tab. So now this is what we just typed in. You know, Tuesday, this is all just the stuff that I have in there. So you just delete out what you don't want and put in your own content. And it's it's just so easy. I'm like baffled. Like I can't believe it took me this long to figure out how to do this. But um, that's it. So I'm going to show you how to put this into your Canvas class. Um, for me, I'm going to do mine a little bit differently in terms of I'm going to add a banner underneath there because I want to make mine fall themed for fall. Right now, it's um, I designed my page for fall theme, so I'll just show you what that looks like. And I did include it in your module in case any of you guys wanted to use the uh, fall theme tabs as well. So it's the same tab concept, but I named it over here Fall Aesthetic. So you can see it's the same tabs, except it has a banner now that says which day of the week in the fall theme. Um, looks really cute on the Canvas app on the student's cell phone as well with the little headers in there. But you don't have to use that. I have blank templates in there if this isn't your thing. It's just if you're feeling the fall vibe, that is also included in the module and available to you. So let's go back to the module for a second because I'm giving you obviously a month's worth of these um, weekly agenda pages, but let me show you very quickly how to add your own 
so that you can put in as many as you want. I'm going to go to modules and scroll. Actually, let me just close these. All my modules are open, just making it a little long for me to scroll. There we go. Okay, this is the module that I want. So, in order for you to duplicate this, like, you know, I would like to do November. Okay, great. You click on the three little dots and you just hit duplicate and it makes a copy and it puts it with the name copy and then I would edit it and I would change the dates and take out that word copy and make it for my November. And update and now I've got my November one and I want to make another one and I just hit the three little dots and duplicate you know and do it again and again and again so it's just three little dots duplicate and so what you'd get by the end of the year is you'd have a running list of each week and all of your lesson plans in there so I just think it's a really nice record of all of your stuff um, I use my modules are designed by content by standard like what standard we're working on with the students so say for example figurative language if you scroll down, it has um, the learning goal, which is a standard from Common Core, and then the assignments that go matching that standard. And my dates are up there because we were working on that standard for that time to week time period. But I still have a weekly agenda. So some people have that argument like, do I want to organize my modules by weeks? Do I want to organize them by Content, I prefer content, but I do have a weekly agenda page so that the kids can stay on track. Because we know that we can't just give them the calendar. The calendar is just the assignments, but it's not the content. For example, in this one example here, um, for the weekly agenda, you know, it has the objective, then what we did for the day, and all of that stuff would be um, linked up and highlighted so kids could just click on it. Because, yeah, then maybe they missed Monday and they missed this assignment, but they also miss the instruction and so we want them to be able to go back and get the instruction too so just telling the kid you know check the calendar doesn't necessarily work when they're missing days and even like you know a couple days in a row okay so how do you get this into your canvas so that you can start messing around with it for that you're going to go into commons and commons is over here on the left and when you get into Commons, there's tons of stuff in here. If you haven't been in Commons yet, Commons is wonderful. Um, you're going to search on my name, which is Angela Lawrence, and that will pop up uh, all the different things that I've put down in, into Canvas for people to download into Commons. And then if you just click on Latest, it'll tell you Easy Canvas Tabs Without Code. And so you can just download this right into your canvas. And I would put it in my sandbox if I was you. So to do that, you're going to click on it and then you're going to choose import download. And I would put it into my sandbox. If you don't have a sandbox, you know, you can make a practice class and you can import into that. Or if you're feeling, you know, in the mood, you can put it right into one of your classes. Normally when I take things down from Commons, I always put it in my sandbox and tweak it first the way I want it and then I import it in but it's totally up to you and so I'm just going to click on my sandbox and then I'm going to scroll down and choose import into course okay and that's it and now it is successfully imported in to start the class um, the last thing I'm going to show you guys while we're on the subject of all this is that sometimes people ask about hold on let me back up the emojis that I put in my uh, modules. So if you were wondering how did I get emojis in there, I'm just going to show you those steps. They're really a lot simpler than they look. So you go into modules and um, let's just say this one with tabs because I'm just so excited about this. You're going to click on to edit. If you want to put an emoji in there, you just right click and choose on the menu. The first thing is emoji. And it gives you this box and you can search down here on the menu which one you want or you can type in let's say I want um, a smiley face because I'm so excited about this tabs with no code thing I just type in smile and it gives me all the smiley faces and then I pick the one I want 
or if I wanted to put in an emoji of a book or something, emoji, and I just type in book, and it'll give me all the books. So it's really smart in that way that it can kind of figure out what you're trying to put in there. And um, that's it. And then you hit update module, and then you got your emojis in there. Okay, so good luck, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that this um, helps you guys out. I know that it's going to help my students who are absent a lot out to have tabs with no code. Bye, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.